How's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my blog. All right, okay. <clears throat> so at the end of the last one, I said I wasn't completely sure what I wanted to do for this one, that it was either going to be a narrating one or it's going to be a story time type one, like in the vein of some of the ones which I've done recently. Um, I think it's going to be sort of a story time cross fan relations one instead. Um, and I know I'm not wearing my normal fan relation uh, hoodie for this, but I am wearing a <laughs> very clear fan, <laughs> fan onesie. <laughs> Um, so, uh, this is not me becoming a Pokétuber, um, although I do watch a, a number of Pokétubers, because I, I have mentioned this before, I am a huge Pokémon fan. Um, so what's kind of changed my mind about what, what I was going to do this week, I mean, I know I hadn't actually decided what I was doing this week, but what sort of made my, this sort of decision for me, um, is there... The Pokemon Sword and Shield have just released, and I have Sword version, and I have been playing it. Um, and I, I've, I've spent, I think, over ten hours so far in the game, and uh, <laughs> I've certainly got four badges. Um, I mean, I think, I think it didn't help that the first time I entered the world, I got lost. I got very lost because <laughs> I like. I just wanted to like explore everywhere and then I quickly realised that you're not really supposed to explore the world in a great deal of depth the, the first time you sort of go there. Um, and that, you know, the, there is a path you, you're supposed to sort of take and, and to follow, but yeah, I got a little bit lost in the world, but on the flip side of that, I learned about the camping mechanic and I love the camping mechanic. <laughs> um, I mean, it's sort of, in some ways, in the vein of, like, the Pokemon Ami stuff and, like, the that, that kind of stuff in the last couple of games where you're sort of, like, interacting one-on-one -on -one with the Pokemon, except you were at, at, um, it's all of them. It, it's your entire squad that you have just there, and you don't have to come out of the menu and go into a different menu in order to get uh, enough to swap which Pokemon you're interacting with, so you can sort of build up their friendliness towards you in, in one go, and I think build up their friendliness towards each other. Um, and I, but I think, I mean, you can't do like the petting stuff, um, which I don't miss too much. In fact, a lot of that sort of, sort of to raise the friendship level stuff that you did in the, in, on the old ones were kind of tedious. The fact that you can sort of like do it kind of en masse and in such an easier way is so much better. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think this is much more of a fan flu than a story time <laughs> at this point. This is me raving uh, happily about uh, Pokemon Sword, Pokemon Sword and Shield games. Um, but yeah, no, the, the camping mechanic and the, the cooking mechanic within that, um, okay, it doesn't like, restore the PP of character moves, but um, I mean, it can restore their health. And, and it can revive them from fainting as well. That's the other like cheeky little thing that I discovered. So it just made made my life so much easier when I was sort of like getting lost or was on a bit of a long route. And it saves like your your um, healing items for when you actually need the healing items. And I'm getting quite good at the cooking mechanic, <laughs> and I enjoy it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was crazy. I mean, I must have been playing the game. Oh, I think I was playing the game for about seven hours before I actually reached the first gym. And as I said, some of that was just getting a little bit lost <laughs> um, in, in the world and stuff. And some of that was me sort of like taking my time. And But it's such, it's such a vast feeling game. It's such like, it, it feels like a really big Pokemon game. Um, and it's just, it's just been absolutely amazing to play so far. Um, so I'm the type of trainer who likes to nickname their Pokemon. Um, so I just, I like feeling like I'm going on the journey with a unique 
one of that type of Pokemon. So that that's my whatever it is, and they're called this because you know it, it's to you know to symbolise the connection between us. It's my like little affectionate name for them. Um, I always go into the, to Pokemon games with a plan of how I'm going to name my squad. Um, so like in the past, I've done everything from naming them after Egyptian pharaohs, um, including female pharaohs, because there, there have been a couple of female pharaohs. Um, in fact, I like intentionally went uh, in, into one of my journeys going, I, I need to have a Pokemon named Hadjet Suit, because Hadjet Suit is an, you know, uh, an amazing female pharaoh. So <laughs> I need to have a Pokemon called that. Um, I've done other things. I... I mean, I quite often name them after characters and whatever stories I'm, I'm sort of working on, which I suppose is kind of the boring way, <laughs> the boring answer. And I'm, I suppose I'm kind of doing the boring answer this time, because um, they are, once again, and yes, they are never rating. <laughs> they are never rating characters. Um, in fact, the last two, because uh, I also got, with my Switch, I got Let Go Pikachu, and I named my squad after important secondary characters in the Neverating series for Let's Go Pikachu because I wanted to save the the main characters in the Neverating series um, for Pokemon Sword when I got it. Um, so I have named my characters after um, the main characters in the Neverating series, which, you know, I've got to tie it back somehow. Um, but... Okay, yes, I've done the boring name, <laughs> name choice, name theme. Um, but I did something a bit more interesting when it came to selecting um, my squad. So I knew I wanted School Bunny. I wanted School Bunny because um, it was Rabbit. <laughs> to me, I thought it was the cutest looking starter. Anyway, I like, of, of the three, it's, what's the one that appealed to me the most? Part of that was because it was a rabbit, and as some of you know, rabbit is one of my uh, one of the animals that I would be if I could be any animal. Um, I am also born in the year of rabbit. Um, I have previously had pet rabbits. Uh, rabbits are one of those animals that you know have special meaning to me. So I was like, I, I need a rabbit, uh, and I need that rabbit, and um, I, I chose that, that that rabbit as my starter. <laughs> um, and I named him Jay, and I think it's it's, it's appropriate um, because it's a sporty little rabbit, and Jay is one of the sportier characters in the, in the Never Rating series. Not the sportiest character, but one of the sportiest characters in the Never Rating series. Um, so after that, I was kind of like, okay, how do I go about choosing my squad? So my original thought uh, back when I first pre-ordered uh, Pokemon Sword, and I knew that I was going to use these names was, okay, I'm going to um, look through the, the Pokemon type charts and I'm going to go for, for Pokemon which are the corresponding colours that I associate with these characters. Um, not that that's a little spoilery hint for uh, the colours I see at all. Uh, <laughs> um, and then I quickly realised that it wouldn't work. Uh, well, I didn't quickly realise that it wouldn't work. I realised that wouldn't work uh, when it was the, the morning of the, was it the day before? It was the morning of the, I think it was actually the morning of, <laughs> the morning of the, get, the game arriving. Um, I was looking at the type charts to, to work out, you know, which options I had for certain characters. And I realised that fire was represented by orange and not by red. <sighs> at which point I was like, eh. J, J is red, uh, so that doesn't work anymore. Um, so I then went, okay, I need to pick my squad in a slightly different way. Uh, so for the first time ever, I've been reading Pokemon descriptions. Now, I always go into a region with the idea of, I want Pokemon that are you know, new to this region. Um, I don't want, you know, obviously I do like, like a lot of the um, Pokemon from previous generations. But when I set out on a new Pokemon adventure, I want it to be a new experience. I don't want it to be like a carbon copy of my previous experience. I want to, you know, 
see where this goes, see what I can do with it, and you know, experience new Pokemon, and and you know, have have a unique journey because you know, with the Pokemon you have on your squad with you, if the balance isn't right, or if the balance is one, more one way or the other, it's going to be harder, it's going to be easier. Um, and I just think it's a much more interesting experience uh, to kind of go in and not know quite what to expect um, from from the journey. Um, so this is the first time I've actually stopped and read uh, the Pokemon descriptions as I've been playing. I'll sometimes sort of you know, check them out afterwards. I mean, as I said, I do watch Pokétubers, so mostly I know what the Pokemon descriptions say from Pokétubers. <laughs> mostly. Um, but this is the first time I've actually like stopped and read the descriptions for every uh, one of the new Pokemon. Not, the, not the, the ones from previous generations, but every one of the new Pokemon that I've, I've come across. Um, and I basically, made, I basically made the decision that I was going to go for Pokemon that reminded me of um, the characters of, of the, the, the names that I'd chosen. Um, yeah, <laughs> sort of worked, sort of didn't. Uh, what, it, what it managed to, to do was stop me from going from every single one of the characters, uh, every single one of the new Pokemon in the starting area, which does sometimes end up happening with me uh, when I haven't, you know, when I don't know what Pokemon to expect and I haven't really thought out, you know, what Pokemon I want on my squad. Um, certainly in a lot of the, the earlier games that I played, my team right up to the end will be Pokemon you can catch in the first, like, two, two, three, two, three, four areas. Um, I, I am a person who will, I am a person who will tackle the Elite Four with a butterfree. <laughs> In fact, when I played, when I played uh, Let's Go, I deliberately decided not to have a uh, Canopy on my squad because I always, always, always have a Butterfree in my playthroughs of, of the, ja the, the Johto games. Um, I am that person who will go up against the Elite Four with a Butterfree, and I know, and I know people don't normally do that because of the Pokétubers that I watch. <laughs> But I will take on a late four with a butterfree. Is that now psychic? <laughs> because I know how to make butterfree awesome. Um, but yeah, no, I, I I am one of those people that if if I see a lot of like Pokemon in like the starting area, then I tend to go for all of those Pokemon in the starting area, and I'm you know I I then sort of like I have I can make a plan of like what type of Pokemon that I need. I mean the freedom of the the new generation of games, um, giving you Fly as an option that doesn't require a Pokemon on your squad needing to know Fly, and Surf being an option that doesn't require a Pokemon you want squad knowing surf makes it a lot easier because that means I don't have to have a flying type and I don't have to have a water type if I don't want to. I quite often will for balance um, but I don't have to and not being sort of like tied to that uh, gives you a lot more freedom like when you're sort of like going through and like you, you see something it's like I oh, you know I don't usually use that type because that part of the, the, the lineup is been taken by something that I need. Um, although saying that, need a queen can learn to surf. <laughs> I have quite often surfed on a need a queen. <laughs> I'm also the person you would take on late four with a need a queen and a need a king. Um, my my Johto games, man, my Johto games. <laughs> Who needs a balanced squad when you have Pokemon you like? <laughs> um, so yeah, um, but my idea this time was to, to go for Pokemon that, that, initially I thought their descriptions reminded me of, um, and yeah, some of them definitely, uh, definitely got that, so um, I found this bug Pokemon, and, and because I do not know my Pokemon, I then don't learn the name, the Pokemon's actual name. Um, I found this bug Pokemon that was described as being a bookworm, and I was like, that's Talora. That's, that's Talora. That, that is Talora. She, this, this worm, this female worm can be Talora. Um, 
And she's evolved into quite a cool-looking psychic bug, which I wasn't expecting. And I, this is one of the Pokemon I had no idea uh, was a thing, um, because I've been keeping myself sort of quite blind to a lot of the... Like, I've kept myself completely blind to the leaks, um, and literally all the information that I was getting about it was, like, the official release stuff, and I'm pretty sure this wasn't one of the ones that was mentioned at, in any of the videos that I saw. Um... So yeah, that that I was like, that's to Laura, bookworm to Laura. That they've just literally written a scene where they're talking about the fact that she reads about everything, and yeah, that that's to Laura. Um, and then I kind of scrapped it all a little bit for Ruli, um, because how could I not have my Wulu, a Wulu named Orion, when Orion is basically a corrupted way of saying Arian, which is what an Air somebody with Aries as a star sign is. <laughs> um, so you know, how can you not have a how can you not have a Ram named Bram? <laughs> I mean, like it's literally, I'm I'm naming an Aries, but a person who is an Aries. Um, so I, yeah. I was kind of like, but, but to be fair, and to be fair, like, the final evolution looks more like a ram as well, so, like, you know, how, how you have, like, a proper ram, so, yeah, that, that was kind of, um, that kind of made that decision, like, quite easy, um, when I came to doing, when I came to doing that one, um, and then after that, um, I came across this, this flower one, and this is one of the ones that, that has been, that was, like, in one of the early promos, and it sort of evolves into this thing of like a big, like, you want to blow dandelion, like, you know, when it's gone onto the seed phase. On its back, I don't, as I said, the, this is a problem with me nicknaming the Pokemon, I don't then know the names of the Pokemon. <laughs> but yeah, so it, it, that's what it evolved into. But its first stage, I was kind of looking at it and I was going, okay, the hair colour's wrong, but that, that's, that's Roxy, that has to be my Roxy. Um... And that was, yeah, I think that was in, like, one of the first few areas. So, at the end of, like, the first few areas, I definitely had those three. And who did I get after that? So I, I, I definitely, I think I might have entered the world with just the three. Is that right? So I've got J, Talora, Roxy covered. Oh, and Ryan, that's four, isn't it? J Talora, Roxy and Ryan. So yeah, I, I entered I entered the world with four Pokemon. And I really wasn't sure and I was checking all the descriptions for the new Pokemon that was coming across to find my Sly and my Zell. Um and all the while I was also watching uh Bird Killer Toby uh, doing his playthrough and um then he came across Applin. Um, and this is one of the few that I do know the name of because I've, I've looked it up several times to like find out how it evolves and when it evolves and what moves it can learn and stuff like that. Um, so I did actually look it up and I, I just saw it and I was like, it's an apple dragon. I want the apple dragon. <laughs> so at this point, at this point, my, uh, my decision to go by the things that remind me um, kind of went out the window a little bit and I was like, I want, I want the apple dragon, it's going to be my sly. <laughs> to be fair, it is a green, it is a green dragon, and green is sly's colour. So, yeah, there is a, there is a coordination there. Plus, dragons are usually these big, huge things, and this, the fact that my sly is not, <laughs> my sly on my squad is not a big, huge thing, like my sly in, in the Never Aten series. <laughs> <laughs> it just amuses me that you know he should like this. This should be a big scary dragon. It's not. It's, it's an apple dragon. And it's now a flapple because I've, I've, I've got sword version and it evolves into a flapple. Um, or when you get the the item, it's the item to evolve it into a flapple. I, I, I like my flapple. It's really cute when it eats when it, when it eats like the food from the um from the camping. It's just the most adorable thing. <laughs> Love my apple. Um, but at that point, I also then started looking at Sinistee. Sinister? Sinistee? Sinistee. Yeah, I think it's called Sinistee. 
which is the the ghost type Pokemon that I knew was going to be a thing um, in, in this game. So one of the ones I, I, I sort of heard about from more of the, the pre-release stuff. Um, I was like, you know what, that... I, I like From the beginning, like from before I got the games, I've been thinking to myself, you know, I don't use ghost type Pokemon very often. Um, and it would be interesting to have a ghost type Pokemon in my squad. And I, I was thinking very early on that it would be my Zell, even you know, even though I couldn't fully justify whether or not, you know, whether why it should be my Zell. Um, but I, I sort of like, was like, you know what, I don't use ghost types very often. This ghost type has a very interesting design. Um, and I would quite like to, to try using a ghost type on this squad. Um, Especially because the squad is very, very unbalanced at the moment. <laughs> because I have a fire type, a pure fire type, which is my starter. And I have a grass type. And I have a psychic bug. <laughs> then I have a grass dragon. <laughs> that's, that's three Pokemon that are weak to my starter. <laughs> um, my normal type is actually surprisingly robust. Um, and surprisingly strong, and I need to give him some better moves, but he's actually surprisingly strong. But I was like, you know what? Let's round this off with a ghost type, just to give a different, um, a, a different kind of coverage. Um, although I need to get some ghost moves for him because of the moves he currently have, a grass type moves, <laughs> like a pure ghost type at the moment. This is the unevolved form. So this is the Sinistee Is the is Sinistee the Fully evolved form or Sinistee the unevolved form? Uh, yeah, Sinistee is the unevolved form and it evolves into Polti Geist. I think that's how you say it anyway. Um, so it's a Sinistee at the moment and they're like, two of them use a grass type news and I'm like, this doesn't up my coverage, what are you doing? <laughs> so I need to, I need to get some uh, I either need it to learn some ghost type moves or I need to give it some ghost type moves because like so so much grass so much grass and bug on my squad but you know what it works <clears throat> I'm actually really happy with the squad that I've got um and, and I mean there are only four badges in um right now so I, I still you know I still have to prove their worth and I've only just I, li I literally I literally I literally literally I entered the town for the fourth badge which was connected to the place where you get Sinistee um like as part of the next route technically speaking so I actually went in there before I was I was supposed to so I couldn't get very far in there and I was kind of like I wonder if I can catch myself a Sinistee in these little patches of grass that I do have access to, and I could. So I actually went into my fourth gym battle with my newly caught Sinistee, who was actually at a higher level than my squad. <laughs> I've been sort of like holding on training them a little bit because I I was worried I was going to have to play catch up with the new Pokemon. <laughs> but no, they're having to play catch up with Zell. Um, I think I think they're sort of they're sort of almost there now. So um. That's good, <laughs> but yeah, that that was that was quite interesting, and I sort of like actually caught myself. And it, wow, it was a it was a little demon to actually catch. It did not want to be caught. <laughs> like broke like broke like several pokeballs just like that. Like, what are you doing? Why? Why, Sinistee? Why? I just want you. I just want you on my squad. I want you to be my Zell. I want you to fill up my last position. I'm tired of boxing all these Pokemon that I'm not using. Um, but yeah, it was <laughs> it was very, very, very happy when I actually caught that. And I went into my fourth gym battle with my full squad, finally. And then I was like, okay, right, it's time to... I, I literally, that was like the last thing I did was my fourth gym battle, actually. That was, that was last night. <laughs> that was last night before filming this. Um, so yeah, um, I don't want to keep babbling about Pokemon because, you know, not everybody's a cup of tea, I know it's not everybody's a cup of tea, but it's, it's you know, where my head is at at the moment. You know, it was a bit of a spontaneous fan I apologise for that. 
but it was fun for me. So yeah, that's, that's the important thing. <laughs> All right, okay. So next time we are absolutely, definitely, 100% going to be talking about Neverating and that is literally because the next book, The Colors I See, is coming out beginning of next month. Therefore, the next one has to be about Neverating. I, it, I'm sorry, it, it has to be. I have to do the self-promotion thing with a new book, like literally coming out or out. I, yeah, literally coming out. <laughs> I was trying to remember if there's another week left of, of November. There, there is. Oh, kind of. Um, so yeah, the next next week absolutely has to be about Neverating. Um, thank you guys for listening to me fangirl over a new Pokemon game. <laughs> I hope it's been fun for for somebody. I hope hope this has been fun for somebody. Um, I hope you're looking forward to the next one and finding out what, what I have to say about the the release of the new book. Um, so I will see you guys next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya.